Back in April, I looked at the Z5 Plus mini PC from ECS, and while it didn't blow me away, it didn't massively disappoint either. It performed all right for its price and for its size. Well, now I have this to take a look at, the Z7 Plus mini PC. So we've gone from the Z5 to the Z7. That's two more Zs. Let's find out if the extra Zs make a difference. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. So aside from the naming change, there have of course been some other changes and updates to this tiny PC from ECS. Pricing starts at 480 quid and goes up the more you customize the spec. The model that I've got here for the review has an Intel Core Ultra 5 125H processor. It's got 16 gig of memory and has Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. Going for this exact spec pushes that price up to 636 quid. Let's have a look at that spec in a little bit more detail then. So starting with the CPU, as I just mentioned, it's the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H, which is a mobile chip to suit the tiny build and tiny chassis of this computer. It's got 14 cores in total, made up of four performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and then two low power efficiency cores. Most of the grunt comes from those performance cores, which run at a base clock speed of 1.2 gigahertz and are capable of boosting up to 4.5 gigahertz. The efficiency cores run much slower, as can be seen in this Cinebench run, and they handle background processing tasks, which frees up the performance cores to handle the more demanding stuff that's going on at a given time. The 125H runs on a base power rating of 28 watts, but on paper it is capable of using up to 115. As for memory, this configuration of the Z7 Plus comes with 16 gig of DDR5 running at 5600 mega transfers. It's made up of two 8 gigabit memory modules. The base model comes with a single stick though. There are two DIMM slots in total, so anyone looking to upgrade would be best off installing a whole new kit if they opted to go for 16 gig from the off. There's no information regarding the memory manufacturer online, but taking a look inside of the Z7 Plus reveals that it's made by Kimtigo, a company located in Shen Zen in China. Storage is pretty limited with just a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. For anyone who's watched any of my previous system reviews, you'll know that storage capacity has been a bit of an issue of mine with previous systems, but I can pretty much forgive that here as the machine isn't designed to be storing a lot of data. With the rise of services for cloud-based computing like Google Workspace and Microsoft Azure, local storage is becoming less of a concern for a lot of business sort of users. If a user needs more storage, they'll likely be using a system that's much bigger and much more powerful than this thing anyway. Although with that being said, there is a spare M.2 2242 slot if you want to add any extra storage in. The specific drive found in the Z7 Plus is a Western Digital SN740. That's a PC PCIe Gen 4 model that returned a result of 4,054 megabytes per second read and 1,997 megabytes per second write when I tested it with Crystal Disk Mark. One thing that has impressed me with the Z7 Plus is the amount of options it has for connectivity, both wireless and physical. There's a total of nine USB ports, five of which are located on the front of the case, which is really convenient. Alongside the power button on the front, there are four Type A ports ports, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 and one 2.0. And then next to that, there's a type C port, which is 3.2 Gen 2 by two. And then on the back, there's another two type A 2.0 ports, and then a pair of type C USB four ports, both of which support DP alt mode for connecting displays. And that's alongside the two HDMI ports, meaning there's support for quad displays from this tiny computer, and it will support up to 8K resolution. Like most people though, I don't own an 8K monitor. I don't want one enough to sell one of my kidneys, but the Z7 Plus has worked great when connecting to my 4K panel throughout my testing. For networking, there's onboard dual ethernet ports, one 2.5 gig and the other one gig. 
That type of redundancy is likely a bit overkill for anyone just sticking the Z7 Plus on a desk, but it's essential for installations in harder to reach areas, which can be more difficult to support when something goes wrong. Wireless connectivity does help with that as well though. The machine supports both Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3. If you're looking for a new chair, then definitely go and check out boolies.co.uk. They offer a whole host of gaming and office chairs that come in a variety of different finishes and different colours. In terms of design and size, the Z7 Plus is a very, very small PC, measuring just 115 by 115 mil square, and then standing at roughly 55 millimeters tall when placed on a desk. There's plenty of venting on the case. It's present on every side apart from the front, and all of it has got what looks like internal dust shielding too. Although if it is for keeping dust out, the holes look a little bit big to keep it out consistently. There's an internal fan on this model too, which is another difference over the Z5 Plus, which helps with cooling. And we'll see how much of a good job that does shortly when we look at the performance and the heat and the charts and stuff. Build quality on this Z7 Plus feels good. The majority of the case is metal, with the top section being plastic. The system overall feels really rigid and really well made, and like it'll take a bit of a battering if it needs to. There's no flashy gaming features to talk about in regards to the design. That's not what the Z7 Plus is for. It's black all around, with some subtle branding and horizontal lines molded into that plastic top case. Software-wise, the Z7 Plus sent out for the review came with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, which that version of the operating system is what I'd expect considering the market the ECS are targeting with this machine. The license for that copy of Windows is an additional cost over the base model of the Z7 Plus though. It'll increase the price pretty significantly. Again, this would be a bit of an issue if this was aimed at anyone other than business users like gamers and stuff, but a lot of businesses usually have their licensing sorted separately before deploying these sorts of machines, so it's understandable. As with all systems I review, all I've done before running it through the following benchmarks is update the operating system and ensure that all the drivers are up to date. Let's have a look at how this thing stacks up against the previous mini PCs that I've reviewed then. Starting off with Cinebench Multicore and the Z7 Plus returned a score of 10,907 points, putting it in second place overall but some way behind the Ryzen powered Geekom A7. We take a look at the CPU performance in a little bit more detail during this Cinebench Multicore run then. We can see that initially the CPU uses its PL2 power limit of 65 watts boosts up to 4.3 gigahertz, and in turn, the CPU package temperature spikes all the way up to 101 degrees Celsius. Then after that short initial boost, which doesn't last any longer than about five to 10 seconds, the PL1 power limits kick in, which are 35 watts, and the CPU clock speeds drop down to around 3.1 to 3.3 gigahertz, which in turn brings that temperature down to a much more manageable and much less concerning around the 80-ish degrees, sometimes high 70s, low 80s. And in Cinebench single core, the system scored 1,694 points, pushing it down to third place in the charts. It's still behind that same Geekon A7 with its Ryzen 9 7940HS, and now it's also behind the MSI QB Nook 1M that I reviewed recently. Single core clock speeds are managed a little better by the compact PC in this benchmark. They do hit and maintain 4.5 gigahertz while using those same power limits we just saw in the multi-core test. In 3D Mark times by then, the system scored a result of 8,092 points for the CPU metric and 3,058 points for the GPU metric. It goes back into second place when you order by the CPU score, again losing out to the Geekom A7, which is a really powerful machine. That GPU score though told a different story with the Z7 Plus landing top of the pile and beating every other mini PC that I've ever reviewed on the channel. So that was a pretty impressive result for the 125H and its integrated graphics that you find in the Z7 Plus. Finally on the synthetic benchmarks, the Ada 64 memory read and write speed test resulted in 70,000 450 megabytes per second read speed and 65,599 megabytes per second write speed. So the memory, while not the fastest we've ever seen, it is certainly fast enough to get the job done. As a world leading manufacturer, CyberPower PC UK expertly builds each PC with the largest range of parts available in the UK. We handle all your packages with care and ship them directly to you on next day delivery. Visit cyberpowersystem.co.uk. So 
After those synthetic benchmarks, I know I've said several times that this machine isn't designed for gaming, but I've not let that stop me in the past and I'm not going to start now. So Counter-Strike 2, my go-to game to test out tech like this. Don't get me wrong, this performance isn't going to set the world on fire, but it was more than playable at 1080p with low settings. It wasn't the smoothest experience ever, but it worked and I was actually able to shoot stuff. Moving over to a game that I don't play much, but my kids do, Fortnite. And going into this game, I wasn't expecting much at all, to be honest, but I was pleasantly surprised. Running everything on low in this title at 1080p, but this time using Intel XESS set to ultra performance and the game's built-in performance rendering mode resulted in FPS that was very often way north of the 100 mark. I was genuinely shocked. Admittedly, the game looks terrible, but it looked terrible on max settings, so it makes no different. Sorry, Fortnite gamers, but Fortnite just doesn't look good, whatever you do to it. It actually felt all right when playing Fortnite 2. So the gaming box, if there is one, albeit not very high up on the priority list of the Z7 Plus, has been sort of ticked. As for work-based stuff, when using Premiere Pro and doing some very light editing on some 4K video, the Z7 Plus performed okay. Timeline scrubbing, while not buttery smooth, was a decent enough experience. I definitely wouldn't like to use it every day for this sort of work, but it would do if I was stuck with nothing else to work on and I had a deadline to meet or whatever. Finally, we have the power, noise and the thermals to look at then. And starting with CPU power, in terms of idle CPU power usage, the Z7 Plus tops the chart using just 4 watts. But that 125H processor does ramp that usage up when it needs to though, using a sustained 36 watts when running a 30 minute Cinebench R23 benchmark. And that power usage is reflected in the heat generated by the CPU, measuring 52 degrees when idle, which is pretty toasty but nothing unusual, but then increasing to a pretty concerning 101 degrees when running through that same Cinebench benchmark test, which led to the clock speeds being reduced as we saw earlier in the review. Noise levels put out by the Z7 Plus while trying to keep itself cool matched what we heard from the Geekom A7, measuring 33 decibels when idle, which is silent when taking the environment into account, and then increasing by just four decibels when the CPU is under load. This is a slightly odd result as a dedicated case fan can be found on the inside of the Z7 Plus's case or chassis, as I mentioned earlier as well, which doesn't seem to be very effective given the 101 degrees CPU temperature that we saw a moment ago. So to wrap up the video then, the Z7 Plus is definitely a step forward when compared to the Z5 Plus. Those two extra Zs certainly help push the performance up a bit. And while the tiny machine is well built and feels sturdy, which will serve it well in a business environment, the heat is a bit concerning. If you stick this behind like a digital advertising screen where it's not going to get much in terms of ventilation, I can't see things doing any better than what I found in my tests. Also, while it is an improvement over that Z5 Plus, it falls some way behind the AMD powered Geekam A7, which in fairness does cost slightly more, so the price to performance ratio aligns with where we'd expect them to fall on the charts. And anyway guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And if you go down below the video into the description, you'll find links to our Discord server, our Patreon page, and our website if you want to check any of that out. Maybe pick yourself a hoodie up for Christmas. Anyway guys, I've been Matt. That's been the Z7 Plus Mini PC from ECS. I'll speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.